There's one of my videos called Man Fights Tiger for 20 minutes at Cow Yai, and it's not clickbait. Mm. And uh, I go through my, my personal sort of encounters with tigers and then I interview a ranger who was actually attacked. What is up guys, this is Brett here from brettdev.com and welcome back to the channel. Now today I've got something interest, very interesting for you, something I haven't done for a very, very long time on this channel. I have an interview with Carl from Thailand. Now Carl is a YouTuber, he's got some of the most fascinating content on the whole of YouTube. In fact, you may even be the most interesting man in all of Thailand. Oh dear me, that's a bit of a burden in, in place on me. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. <laughs> so, Carl, welcome to the channel, mate. Um, I think maybe kick things off. Let people, know, for those of you who don't follow Carl, um, let them know where you're from, how you first came to Thailand, what your channel's about, and all sure, of that. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, I first come to. I'm, I'm from England. I'm from uh, Northwest London, a place called Northwood, which is most famous because it's where the big NATO base is. Uh, I first come to Thailand in 1987, 35 years ago. And I was here for three months in that first visit and it just totally blew me away. I mean, it was just, things were so much different back then, Brett. You know, even booking an air ticket was an adventure. You know, my friend had to, uh, he came down for a whole weekend while we looked for tickets, booked them, you know, and then we had looking for the exchange mark, phoning up, getting the cheapest price, then having to go and collect the tickets. Uh, so yeah, everything was a real adventure and the place just blew my mind. You know, there was no getting prepared for it back then. You know, nowadays you get people who come here who know quite a lot because they picked up stuff from the YouTube, you know, or the, the internet in general. Back then there was no internet, there was no YouTube. So there was like the, uh, you know, selfie stage on a shoestring book and things that you've heard from mates, you know, so, uh, yeah, that was how I first come to Thailand. I come out here with a, with a couple of mates for three months and loved it. That's an interesting um, fact because that was actually the year I was born. <laughs> oh no, you make me feel old now, mate. <laughs> so you, you first came to Thailand the year I was born. That is absolutely insane. And have you been here ever since then or have you been coming back or... You've been here for most of that time, right? No, no, not really. You know, I've lived here a few times in that period, but what I have done is I've spent time here every year since 1987. So be that, it might have just been like a month's holiday or something, or there, there have been periods when I've been living here. But yeah, I've spent time here every year since then. Wow, and um, so your channel, your YouTube channel, is very different to what a lot of you guys are probably used to because you are kind of pioneering and leading the way in your content, as we've spoken about. Because yeah, you're, you're doing something that nobody else is doing and that kind of ties into when you first come here and what you used to do when you were here back in the day as well. Sure, you know, I think, you know, people like Paddy Doyle are doing something similar, you know, quite a lot more successfully, you know, but yeah, ever since I first come here, I always like, as one, somebody once said to me, I've got an incurable sense of adventure. So, you know, whenever I was here, I just always wanted to travel to new places. You know, I can remember when I, I lived here about 1990, 91, I was teaching English. As soon as I got a few thousand baht together, I'd go to, uh, yeah, I'd get on the bus somewhere and just go up to Isan and just literally get, go on third class buses with my mates and we'd just jump off where we felt like it. Right. Um, you know, like we always got into some adventure, you know, we just, yeah, where should we jump off in Konkan? Yeah, all right, yeah, it's getting a bit late and, uh, yeah. It was just like that, yeah. It was fantastic. And your channel, for those who aren't familiar with it, sorry, we've got some music playing in the background, but anyway. Yeah, for your, your channel, for those who aren't familiar with it, is um, it's mostly hiking. You're mostly up in the mountains, doing treks, going on trails. You've got some content in Patea, but not too much. And I watched a lot of your videos. You said back in the day you was doing guide, guiding and stuff, like way back in the day. Yeah, that was in Khao Yai National Park. You know, that would have been like 1990, 1991, bit of 1992. Yeah, you know, that we were just working with a local guy who ran a little business based in Park Chong. And we'd take people around Khao Yai National Park. And it was, uh, it was an incredible experience. You know, I, I just, I was teaching English at the time. And what happened was it was a Songkran holiday. So we booked a trip to go and see this national park. I remember seeing posters for it and in the road I was staying in. And it said that they had tigers there. And I thought, well, it's only a few hours from Bangkok and they've got wild tigers. And so we went on this tour 
and the, the guy who took us around, you know, he could speak all right English, but not very good. But even then I could speak Thai. So I ended up kind of translating for him. And, and at the end of it, you know, he asked me if I wanted a job, you know, so I thought teaching English in Bangkok or sort of taking people through the jungle at Khao Yai, no contest. <laughs> right, right. So that was it. But there was no bloody money in it, Brett. You know, it was for the love of it. You know, by the time we'd paid for all the, you know, the pickup rentals and everything, it was just, but it was so much fun, you know, I, I just loved it. And you've got some um, very, very interesting stories on your channel about those times when you were... Yeah. There. There's one, one in particular about a tiger. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Can you yeah, tell no, that story? <laughs> well, back in those days, they had wild tigers. What I do is, you know, I'll give an outline of it and people can watch I'll the video if they want to. I'll link to it for sure. You know, yeah. it's a long story, but basically, you know, in those days, they still had wild tigers even though they were very, very rare. And I always wanted to see one. So it got to the extent that, you know, I'd be up there when we had tours, but even when we didn't have tours, you know, at weekends or something, I'd still go up there. And I got to befriend some of the rangers, you know, who lived and worked there. And, uh, and through my friendship with them, you know, one, at one time I had a couple of tourists who wanted to see a tiger. And, uh, you know, I was very doubtful I could do it because I did, at that point I'd never actually seen one myself. But, uh, you know, I did, there's one of my videos called Man Fights Tiger for 20 minutes at Cow Yai, and it's not clickbait. Mm. And uh, I go through my, my personal sort of encounters with tigers and then I interview a ranger who was actually attacked by a tiger. So, uh, yeah, yeah, very, uh, yeah, that, that's an experience now that kind of really blows my mind when I think about it, you know. It's, and, uh, and you were saying about one of the tigers tracking you as well through the jungle? Yeah, that was the second encounter I had, right. you know, that was, I was with a friend and uh, we, we were hiking back to this ranger station and uh, it was getting dark. And of course, uh, when, when it's getting dark and you're under the jungle canopy, you know, it gets very dark very quickly. And uh, yeah, basically uh, we saw a tiger at very close range and we still had about 30 minutes to get to the ranger station and the tiger followed us. You know, we, 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 we couldn't actually see it following us, but we, we could hear noises, you know, we could hear twigs cracking behind us. And, and we had about 30 minutes before we got to this ranger station. And uh, I remember the next morning I, I went down to the tree line and, and found tiger pug marks by the tree line. So the tiger followed us until the forest ended. And once we got in the grassland, he didn't follow us anymore, you know, but... Do you think, uh, do you think he just wasn't hungry that day, or...? Oh, do you know, what? I, it, when we first saw it, it was like eight metres away. If it had wanted to get us, there would have been absolutely nothing we could have done. We were unarmed. Uh, it was just it and us, and it, you know... Wow. Yeah, yeah, luck was on our side. That is insane. Well, I, you... I didn't realise the full extent of my luck until I spoke, interviewed the ranger who was actually attacked by one. You know, it's an incredible interview. I was, yeah. I was uh, pleased to get that. I'll definitely link to that. And what year was that? That was 1992. 1992. 1992. Yeah, 30 years ago. Wow, wow. And um, wh when did you st when did you stop doing the the ranger the stuff? In it was about then. It was about that time. You know, it was just like I said. I mean, it was just fun. You know, there yeah. was no money in it, but it was an adventure. But it was important because it kind of like really kind of like really sparked up my interest in that kind of adventurous thing you know yeah. and since i still you know i still love jungle hiking you know yeah. hill hiking that kind of thing i guess it's where it all started for you as well because your channel now is pretty much that right and you, you've been doing it ever since then or uh yeah you know like not you know there have been certain times when i've called it you know if i've been here for a month's holiday or whatever you know sometimes you don't get the chance to do it but you know i've been here for the past six years and I've really kind of doubled down on it, you know. And yeah, I was doing it for a, a good few years before I started my YouTube channel, you know. And when, when did you start the channel? I, I first found out about you on, um, I remember watching Simon with that Land of Smiles. And he yeah, yeah, with, Simon, uh, that's right. That, that, would have been, that would have been about October 2020. Yeah, I remember that. I remember after that, I had about 90 subscribers. Right. <laughs> well, that's when I first saw you on there, yeah. Really, you were watching that one, yeah? Yeah, I, I caught it. I didn't watch it all, don't you? But I, I caught it, and then um, your friends with Brian Flowers in Patea. Yeah, and then yeah. When he, it was he, his idea actually to start the I channel. Think yeah. He introduced me to you, and that's and I was, I was like, oh yeah, I know him because I remember him from Simon's thing. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it was August 2020. That was when I did my first video. Right. Yeah. yeah okay. Absolutely. And it's been going okay. You're picking up. You've got about 5,000 subscribers. 
Yeah, just short of that, four and a half thousand at the moment. Yeah. It's, oh, it's been a slow battle, Brett, you know, and it's been, you know, and I've had so much temptation to do other kinds of content. You know, just before Christmas, I did a couple of Pattaya videos and they did quite well. You know, one got about 16,000 views, the other one got 22,000. And, and so the temptation was to just sort of, oh, do more Pattaya videos, but like, you know, Pattaya sort of pretty well supplied with vloggers at the moment. You know, no, some of them are good. Do you know, but I d that isn't what I wanted to do. So I've been kind of stubborn and I'm just like, no, that isn't what I want to do, you know? Yeah, I think, I think stick with the content that you're making. And I think half those people in Pattaya aren't going to want to go hiking through the jungle either. Which, speaking of jungle, we just, we just literally got back from a um, hike today. <laughs> Was it two and a half hours? Two hours? Two yeah, hours? yeah, yeah. Two, two and a half. Well, two, two and a half hours for you. It was a bit longer for me. It was about four for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He did like two hours before, just casual, and he dragged me all the way from the bottom to the top of Doys to Tep. So if yeah. You, if you guys and I'm in the videos, if you stumbling up the mountains. So if you guys do want to see that, then um, click the link. I'll put the link right up here at the top. You can go and watch. Carl's channel when you If it's me. out by then, by the time you put this out, I can be a bit slow on my editing. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, well, <laughs> but I'll, it'll I'll be up. I'll come back and put it up. I'll come back and put it up. <laughs> you've seen places that we all go to today. Like yeah, you were yeah. just, you were in Chiang Mai, you've come into Chiang Mai yesterday, right? Yeah. You, would, you went down Loikor Road and you said that's been there that entire time. Yeah, virtually, I, I can remember those little uh, bars on Loy Crop, I can remember them going back like 30 years, yeah. Yeah, so how, yeah. Diff how, how mind bendingly different must that have been compared to now? Well, you know, at the time, it's just that's what it was. It's only now that times pass by you can look back on it. I don't know, you know, like as regards Chiang Mai and that, I, I don't remember it being too much different. No, not this little central bit, you know, the, the actual, the old city within the walls. A hell of a lot more guest houses and, uh, and businesses have sprung up, you know, especially at the north end behind the Sompet Market. You know, there's a lot more, lot more massage places and that. But the actual layout of the roads and everything is pretty similar. I'll tell you, there was another little bar by the Tarpe Gate, you know, on the uh, top north hotel side of the Tarpe Gate. It used to be called Lovebirds. It was a little little bar, but that disappeared in the 80s. I don't, I don't think they even made it to the 90s. I'm almost certain. You know, that, that was a nice little memory. There used to be a crazy little go-go uh, bar down the back lanes uh, called Las Vegas, you know? It was what I call like a, a Thai star go-go bar, you know? It was like, it, it was, you know, everything was a bit downscale and it, it, the pricing structure. I've got some old pictures, you know? I've got a few old pictures that I'll, I'll put up, but not really, you know, not really pictures of the nightlife. I think I've got pictures of a friend going into the Lovebirds bar and, uh, I've got some pictures of me at Chiang Mai Station and sort of stuff like that. But I think looking at it, you won't really see much difference, you know? Right. That's but, crazy to think But about really, as a city, Chiang Mai has changed immensely. Once you get outside of the centre, then, you know, like it really has, it's grown incredibly, you know. The traffic now yeah. can, be, can be terrible, you know? And when you first got here, would it just, was it just the old city or was it just a little bit outside of it? Or? No, 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 there was plenty that went on outside. You know, but they, you know, there's just a lot more like condominium buildings and there's shopping malls now that weren't there before. Tell you something that really hasn't changed them out is the Night Bazaar area. I think that, I think that only recently opened when I first went there. And my strongest memory of that Night Bazaar is we used to spend, me and my friend would spend hours looking at pirate cassette tapes. You know, it was all cassette tapes and they used to have branded cassette tape called Peacock. And quite, you'd play them, and it, you could hear like a, they were like needle drops. So you could hear, you could hear the crackling on the vinyl, you know, where somebody just sort of recorded it, wow. and then they copy it, you know. But that's what there was then, you know. You had a little Walkman with cassette tapes, and uh, cool, that's amazing. And, and where did you, where have you spent the most of your time in Thailand? Uh, God, it's a good question. You know, I don't know. You know, in the early years, I spent a lot of time in Bangkok. Later, probably most of it in Pattaya. But I've travelled to every province of Thailand, you know, lots of them many, many times, you know. So kind of I've always been always been on the on the move, but Yeah, it'd be a toss up between Pattaya and Bangkok, in all honesty, where I spent the most time, yeah. Yeah, I remember speaking to you um, when I met you a, a couple of months ago and um, you've got some good stories on your channel as well. Um, so if you guys are interested in that, the history as well, there's some good stuff we're talking about. I think you should do more of that as well. Well, you know what? I've got lots and lots of old pictures. That's one thing I did right 
was on my first trips here, I used to take pictures, you know, and I, I took slides, which were kind of like, I questioned my logic at the time, you know, taking slides, but... Oh, slides, you have to... <laughs> yeah, 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 you remember, you know, 24 or 36 of frames. Transparencies, you know, instead of a negative, you get a positive image. Right, so right. You'd, you'd project it, you needed a projector and a big screen to show them properly, you know? Okay. So, you know, it was like, yeah, that's what it was like when you, when you saw my holiday pictures, you had to come round, we had a slideshow, you know? Right. But, I, you know, at the time I thought, oh, this is crazy because I have to set all the kit up every time I want to sh show somebody my pictures. Uh, usually it was 35 millimeter. Most people would take negatives. They take films with negatives and then you take them to the chemist, get the film processed, and from them they'd make prints and give you prints. Now, slide film produced a positive image so you didn't get, normally get prints made from it, you just slice them up and you put them in frames and then you'd project them, you'd have to project them onto the screen. Now the advantage of that was that yeah, they were much better picture quality, you know? And I used to take slides, I don't know why, they were a lot more inconvenient at the time. But I'm really glad I took them now because, you know, like most people didn't used to keep the negatives of their pictures and their pictures over the years have got lost and torn or, you know, they faded or whatever. So. Uh, Luckily, I've got all these slides, and uh, what I'm in the process of doing is making some videos that I'm going narr to narrate, you know, that kind of like, I'm going to show with the pictures and tell the stories behind the pictures, and just sort of like any observations I've got about how things have changed, you yeah. know? So, that, you know, I think that's something that, that people are finding interesting yeah. coming up. I'm probably going to have about, I don't know, six or seven of them, you know, because I've got a lot of slides. And you're showing people a whole side of Thailand that they can enjoy that they wouldn't otherwise as well. Yeah, yeah, some people, you know, when I first started the channel, I was kind of convinced that everybody was going to say, oh, that's great, yeah, I'm going to go there now. But actually, you know, that doesn't happen that much. What often happens is people just say, oh, I really enjoy watching it. You know, I don't want to do it myself or, <laughs> you, <don't wanna laughs> you know, like, I don't want to do that myself, but I enjoy watching you do it. So I'm sort of like, I'm quite, you know, yeah, I'm quite getting into that side of it now. And I, and I think, yeah, well, it's not any different. Really, it's not any different to me watching people going up Everest. You know, I mean, I'm not saying it's comparable feat to that, but it's the same principle, is it? You know, I'm never going to do it. Mm. But, you know, that doesn't mean I can't watch other in people do people it. People can live vicariously through you. Yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe some of them do that, yeah. 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 Well, that was an adventure today, man, going up to the top of Doyce and Tail. Well, that was my idea. I thought, well, look, you know, like, uh, you know, what is uh, one of the biggest tourist destinations in Chiang Mai is Doyce Utep Temple, you know, the, the big mountain that overlooks the city. And, uh, you, know, I, you know, I've been up there hundreds of times and, and everybody who comes to Chiang Mai and spends any time, it probably goes up there. So I just thought, well, how can I put a cold Thailand angle on it? So I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll go up there Walk but I'll walk from a hotel and I'll walk <laughs> to the foot. They've got a thing called the Monk's Trail that the monks used to use to go up there. You know, it's just, it's not as long as the road going up, but it's a lot steeper. And the monks used to use it. So I thought I'll walk to the Monk's Trail. And then you said you were in for doing the Monk's Trail. So I met you there and, and I thought, well, that's it. We, we did what everybody else did. We went to Doi Su Tep, but we did it different. You know, mm. we, uh, we earned it. At the, f the first half of it, I was like, this is easy. Like, Fucking big bollocks, yeah. oh, I could do this. Yeah. As soon as I got to the second half, I knew he died. <laughs> yeah, well, let's see, well, the first half has got that like, that lovely little temple, isn't it? Like, sort of at the at the halfway mark, and it's kind of like a reward. And then, <laughs> but the second half, you just get, you cut, cut across the road, and it's just steep like that, isn't it? And it's just like never ending, you know? And the second half, you could tell nobody really even goes up that second half, because they, yeah. they block the road off, and it's like, you sure, kind of yeah. find it, we're like, are we sure it's yeah, there? Yeah, there's no signs or anything, is it? You either know it's there or you don't, yeah. do you, you know? Well, this is a great thing about your channel as well, like, if you are into hiking or walking, everyone could just watch your channel and find out about all these amazing places. Yeah, yeah, sure, you there's know. There's nothing else like that. Like you, you, like, you could go on, like, download the apps that give you the routes, yeah, but you're not going to know if they're good or not. If you want to know if they're good, watch your sure, videos. Sure, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to, you know, if I find somebody that's interesting, I'll go and check it out. You know, I'll go and see it. Mm. You know, that, and you know, sometimes you know, quite the, the, there are a couple of other YouTubers who are doing, you know, sort of or are willing to do similar stuff, and sometimes they come along with me, and they're they're pretty good yeah. in their in their own way, and that, that's something I really enjoy. You know, I'll, I'll go up with a. With Jimmy, JB Wonders, and uh, Baldy Brian, Baldy Brian in Thailand, you know, and uh, I'll, I'll go up with them, and and you know, so basically we we'll be videoing the same trip, 
but we get three different edits of it, three different spins on it, you right. know? You know, really like with Jimmy, I'll, I'll sort of I'll be into the scenery and making it as uh, cinematic as possible. And Jimmy, who's got like he's got the real head for detail, so Jimmy will be like looking up the history and you know going all to, into all the minute and just you know just uh, you know. And I enjoy that. I enjoy watching their their spins so you're, on it. You're going like as a whole gang. Yeah, usually I like doing it that way. I mean, there's a practical side as well. I mean, some of the places I go are dangerous, you know. So if you you know what I mean? If you go on your own, which I have done, you know, I've done jungle hiking on my own, but if something happens, then <laughs> you're, uh, you could be out of luck. What's the longest you've ever been in the jungle for? It would have been that hike. It was about a week. It was that hike I did from uh, San Clapbury, which is in Kanchanaburi province, in the remote, most remote part of Thailand. We hiked 116 kilometers to just south of Umpang, which is, uh, you know, and, and it's, there are no roads, you can't drive a car that way. You know, sometimes if conditions are favorable, you can get dirt bikes down there. But that year, the, the, the guide said they wouldn't be able to do it, you know? But it's, uh, it's the most remote part of Thailand. And, and to give you an example of how remote it is, uh, it took us a week to do the 116 kilometers. I parked my car in San Calabari in Kanjanaburi province. And to get back to my car at the other end, it took us three days on public transport to travel 900 kilometers to get back to my car. So 116 kilometer hike and to get back to the car was 900 kilometers because we had to Whoa. circumnavigate all these protected jungle areas and wow. wildlife reserves, you know? So it was, yeah, that was, uh, oh, and, it, we, and we did it at the wrong time of year. You know, we did it, <laughs> we did it in a rainy season. We, I'll tell you, Brett, we were never dry for a whole week. You know, we'd we'd get into a village or wherever we were staying that night, and we'd wash our clothes in the stream. We'd put them out to dry, and it would never dry. It was just too humid. So we were walking around in wet clothes for a week. You know, and we were getting sores, and oh. these the insects are much much worse in the jungle in the rainy season. You know, so we were just, you know, I've got some pictures and I've got little video clips, and I might actually make a retro video of that trek, you know, just to put something together. It won't be, you know, it won't be like a, a, a one of my normal videos, but it'll just, it'll just be enough to give people an idea of, of what went on, you know? Yeah. So if people want to see that, they can head over to your channel. That will, that will come up soon, sooner or later. Yeah, sooner or later, you know how it is. And the one thing I wanted to ask you before we wrap this up is, it's a, I think it's, your channel is amazing. And everybody says this, everybody that watches your channel says it's some of the best content in Thailand because it's unique, it's original, it shows a side of Thailand that you're never going to get to see on anybody else's channel. Thanks. And now that you have it going, it's gaining momentum. What is your like ambition for it? Like, um, like what, what are your main goals? Do you, do you get people reaching out to you saying like, hey, can you show me do you know? Around you or? know? Do you know, Brett? That has been that has been starting to happen recently. You know, I mean, especially since I did a little thing with uh, Paddy Doyle. You know, I met Paddy and he asked me to do a little vlog with him in Pattaya. And you know, obviously he's got a big following and and I've attracted a bit of interest. There. Yes, I do. You know, like I always have right from the beginning. I get people who who ask if I you know if I take them travelling to places and uh, you know if I'd kind of you know host a trip and things like that. And uh, I'm getting some offers in, and uh, you know I'm giving it some consideration. I think it's it's probably something I would enjoy doing. You know, if you, if you could get a group of like-minded people mm. who are up for a bit of adventure, you know. And well, this is the thing. Like everybody always says to me about coming to Thailand, what is, what is there to do in Thailand other than you know drinking or like going to just the general tourist attractions? Yeah. A lot of people that have been here a few oh. times. They're bored of that. This yeah. is why I like this because it opens up a whole new world. Like oh, and it, yeah. and it is, you know. Like I, you know, I, I, I'll never run out of ideas. And it's good for you as well. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, well, it could be very bad for you. It just depends where you go, but you know, right. yeah, yeah. It's it's just another side of Thailand. Now I can appreciate the people who come here on a two, three week holiday. They've got very limited time, and some of the places I go to to visit, you know, it could take four or five days out of their holiday, you know. But there are plenty of people who spend a long time here, you know, they might be retired and they've got the time and the facility to do it. And Well, it's not just that. Once you've been to Thailand once, twice, three times, four times, what are you yeah. going to do? Just go back and do the exact same thing? Yeah. Why not, why not yeah. come and, like, you know, this is one of the big problems. Oh, sorry, I thought the camera died. <laughs> this is one of the big problems with... Um, just bright sunlight. Yeah, you got the sun on your face. <laughs> it's one of the big problems with Thailand as well is 
you know, I remember coming here when I first came here. Thailand is very cool because it's like interesting, but what I didn't like about Thailand is that all the interesting things you can do seem artificial and manufactured for you. Yeah. Like, like you think, wow, what an adventure. I'm going and being exploring and like, it's been built for you, bro. You're like a hamster in a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not all the tourists, yeah. the attractions. Yeah, yeah. But with what you're doing, especially if somebody comes out, especially if they go with you, like that's real adventure. Like, yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. do that on a yeah. tourist track. No, no, that's right, and yeah. When I go somewhere and yeah. I want an adventure, I want a real adventure. I don't want like an artificial fake adventure that's yeah, made no, for me yeah, to make yeah. me feel special. Yeah, you're not gonna get people jumping out with a Polaroid saying, do you want you to take your picture, your yeah. picture taken or anything like that, you know? Yeah. It is what you make it. Yeah, you know, that is that is what drives me. You know, I mean, I did I did all the tourist stuff, you know? I just did it, you know, so I did it lots and lots and it's great, it's fantastic. You know, you have to do it once, maybe even twice. But like you say, you know, like after that, you, you're looking for new kicks, you know? Yeah, yeah. And you can definitely get them through your channel, man. So thank you. Thank very, you. Thank you very much for coming on. No, it's been a pleasure, Brett. And, yeah. and thank you. I, I total respect for you today, because when I said to you, I'm going to do this crazy thing and walk up Doi Sutet, I really thought you'd be like most people. And you're sort of like, well, you know, like uh, next time you're up, you know, or something uh, like that. But you did it, mate. You did it. I did it. I, I, was, I was wrecked, but I think I did all right, though. No, okay. no, hey, no, you were fine. You didn't whinge. That, that is the, that is the thing that annoys so me I'd when people. A little bit at the end. <laughs> well, I think I might have whinged a little bit. You know, I mean, he was dragging on a bit, but you know. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Pleasure. Cool. And go and check out Carl's channel. It's absolutely awesome. If you really like this video, then you're probably going to like this one. And if I can put a link to Carl's channel, I'll put it yeah, right it's, here. It's Carl's Thailand with a K. K A R L. Carl's Thailand. That's all for now, Cheers. guys. Take care, peace.